if I have a hobby, it's it's dabbling in deviled eggs, yes. So how did that happen? Why deviled eggs? Well, somebody's got to make them. Because they're, they're kind of cool, you know. I Anything that's in your fridge can be a mastermind into a deviled egg. Welcome to the 50th episode of Funeral Potatoes and Wool Mittens, a show for people who embrace the warm and cozy spirit of everyday living in the Midwest. From the blog Random Sweets, I'm your host, Stacey Mergenthal. We're heading to Iowa today to speak with Iowa Egg Council's board chairman, Bruce Doima, and director of marketing and communications, Melissa Alto Kintai, about one powerhouse food, eggs. First, we cover the basics, like how many eggs a chicken lays in a day, what determines the color of eggs, their nutritional value and health benefits, why we refrigerate our eggs in the U.S., and which fast food restaurant still cracks a real egg for their breakfast sandwich. Then, Bruce, who is also known as the director of Devil's Eggs, shares a few of his tips and recipes, plus he tells me why he made deviled eggs on three continents in three days and what his next bucket list wish is. You can get Bruce's recipes for shrimp deviled eggs, smoked deviled eggs, sweet and or sassy deviled eggs, avocado deviled eggs, and cheesy peasy deviled eggs on my website, randomsweets.com. Whether this is your first or 50th episode of Funeral Potatoes and Wool Mittens, I'm just so glad that you're here and I hope you keep coming back for more. If you like what you hear, please just take a moment to rate this podcast in your app and write a review. It might be just as simple as a few sentences about why you like to tune in. But doing this really helps other people find the podcast. We go through a lot of eggs at our house. And we're empty nesters, Jason and I. So, but we still go through a lot of eggs. We like eggs for breakfast. We like them hard boiled, deviled, in savory dishes, you name it. We always have eggs in the refrigerator. Plus, I bake a lot. So, when we buy eggs, it's definitely more than a dozen at a time. I've even been known to purchase crates of like 60 eggs at a time because I have so much baking to do. <laughs> and like sugar and butter eggs are an ingredient that I can't imagine being without. So when I learned that my neighboring state of Iowa leads the nation in egg production, I just had to invite people who are involved in and they support the industry in their own ways. So welcome, Melissa and Bruce from Iowa Egg Council. Hello. Thank you. Welcome to Funeral Potatoes and Wool Mittens. (laughs) Why don't you two just take a minute so that we can learn a little bit about you individually you know, your role with the Iowa Egg Council, your role in egg production and farming. I know, Bruce, I've read your bio and you go way back to a very young age of eggs and chickens. So I can't wait to learn about both of you. Yeah, my name is Bruce Doima and I'm from Sioux Center, Iowa. So I'm way up in the northwest corner of Iowa. We're kind of sandwiched in between Sioux City, Iowa and Sioux Falls, South Dakota. I am 60 years old and i made the mistake of when I was in seventh grade, um, we used to be in dairy production. And when I was in seventh grade, I asked my mom and dad for 12 chickens. And uh, my mom and dad are very aggressive and they got me 24 chickens that summer. (laughs) And then the following year, in my eighth grade year, they decided to build a 60,000 bird egg laying house. So we had 60,000 the next year. And that was in 1978. And, uh, Today, you know, so I was, uh, what, 13, 14 years old at that time, and uh, I'm 60 now. And uh, today, with all the companies and the partnerships that I'm involved in, uh, with the partners here, uh, it adds up to about 35 million layers across the country. We have uh, production in Ohio, Iowa, Washington, Oregon. Idaho, Utah, Colorado, and we also have some production in Mozambique, Africa. And what what company is that? Uh, well, it's all different companies. So um, in in Iowa, it's it's uh, Centerfresh, uh, Centrum, Ovation, uh, Iowa Cage Free. In Ohio, Ohio, it's Trillium. Uh, it's Willamette Egg Company in uh, Washington, Morning Fresh in Colorado and Oakdale in Idaho and Utah. 
your parents, you said they went started from dairy to 24 chickens to 60,000. Yeah. So uh, my dad had a midlife crisis at 55 years old when he <laughs> built, built the second chicken house. He, he said to my mom, and I, I can remember vividly, you know, we, we have 60 cows that we're milking and I can't do that for the rest of my life because it's pretty hard. I need to find something easier to do. So he felt uh, chickens was an easier route to go so that he could continue working past uh, 65 because, you know, in the Midwest, uh, we, we work till uh, mm -hmm. work is our hobby, you might say. We never retire. So we just keep working till we're 70, 80, 85, 90, whenever. That especially seems to be true in the ag industry. Melissa? I'm Melissa Alto Kintai, and I am the Director of Marketing Communications for Iowa Egg Council. I don't have an ag background. I have a marketing background. So I received my MBA in marketing in 2010, which is the same year I moved to Iowa from northern Minnesota on the Iron Range. Oh, um, wow. Yeah, so I'm from the part of Minnesota, up, I guess close by Canada. We moved because my husband got a job at hy V, and I actually, so I would in no way ever say I was, a, you know, an egg farmer or anything, but I did have chickens when I lived in Des Moines, and then we bought a house in Grimes, and I had to get rid of my chickens, so my <laughs> good friend took them all, and it was certainly an eye opening. So I can't imagine Bruce that your dad found that easier because I was right. maybe it's just the level of chicken care I gave because I did all of the things that, um, you know, I had a fancy like glittery chicken coop and, you know, you can make it what it is. I'm sure your dad doesn't have glitter on his chicken coop. So, or didn't. Well, you know, the, the cool thing about chickens is, uh, when you, when you dairy, Back then, you milk the cows twice, so you gotta you gotta get up at five in the morning to milk cows, and you do it at five again at night. Milk the cows. You know, chicken only lays one egg a day, so you only gotta milk it once. So that's true. You know, if you want to be <laughs> done uh, with your chores, you could be done at noon with the chickens and uh, take the afternoon off if you wanted to do something special, right? That's, that's true. They did only lay. Of course, mine always like to escape the coop and go hide the eggs. I'm sure that was <laughs> me. <laughs> so anyway, I have a background in graphic design, and then I got my MBA in marketing, and I have a print background as well. So I am experienced with print and mail type of design. And then I, in July of last year, which is 2023, I got my job at Iowa Egg Council. Very cool. So tell me what the Iowa Egg Council is. So the Iowa Egg Council exists to support egg farming and consumption of egg and egg products. Well, that's an easy thing to support, <laughs> eating we're, eggs. <laughs> we're, we're kind of the advertising research and development side of the egg production in Iowa. And the North Central Poultry Association is kind of the legislative side. So the Egg Council can't do anything legislative okay. like the association can and uh, we're basically into education promotion whatever we can do i've i'm currently the the president of the iowa egg council and i've been on the egg council since we're trying to figure out when i actually joined the egg council got <laughs> on the board and we think it's somewhere around 1995 or 96 what are some surprising stats about the the u.s and iowa egg industries Yes. I, we always think of corn in Iowa. <laughs> Bruce has much more knowledge than I do, but I will chime in a couple of things that I do know is, yes, we are the largest state and the majority of the products we produce are actually the liquid egg rather than the shell egg products. Really? So the types of eggs that are used in like food service. Okay. So I'll, I'll chime in there because most of our eggs that we produce in Iowa are broken for further processing. So I can tell you're uh, you're quite intrigued of of that uh, the broken egg. So you know, roughly in the United States, we have 330 million chickens currently, and that's currently the population of the United States. Of that 330 million chickens, about one third of the egg production from those chickens is used for further processing, meaning hard boiled eggs, hard cooked eggs, uh, baking products like cake mixes, 
cookies, uh, noodles, about anything in the store that you buy has more than likely has some type of egg in it. Uh, mm -hmm. You go to, you know, like when you go to the hotels and they have um, uh, breakfast, like Holiday Inn mm -hmm. Expresses and stuff. Yeah. Those egg omelets are pre-made, frozen, and shipped. So those could be some of our eggs, uh, uh, you know, the broken eggs. Um, you know, you go to salad bars and they got eggs, diced eggs on the salad mm -hmm. bars. All that's pre-done, further processed. Like Burger King, McDonald's, all that stuff is processed egg, liquid egg. Now, McDonald's is the only quick service restaurant that still does cracks an egg. They they do that for their egg McMuffin sandwiches yet. But when you buy the scrambled egg at McDonald's, that's that's liquid egg. Another interesting little tidbit for you uh, bakers out there that like to uh, make omelets. And if you go to the store and buy a liquid egg in a, in a carton, if you take a soup ladle and fill that with liquid egg, that's approximately the same as two eggs. So you put that in your pan and you got a two egg omelet. Oh, sure. Okay. How many, well, the eggs we were talking earlier, did you say that the eggs, sorry, the chickens are only laying one egg a day? So a perfect chicken in a perfect world would lay one egg a day. <laughs> okay. So when, when it, so... I'm I'm gonna start with picture two eggs. So I'm I'm gonna talk about broilers and layers right now. So you, you you picture you got two eggs side by side, and and this has got to do with genetics. You hatch both of those eggs. One's a broiler, one's a layer. The broiler chick takes six weeks to grow to six pounds, and then you can harvest it. Right? You can butcher it, and and you got chicken in the store. Now, the layer egg, so in six weeks, it grows to six pounds. The layer egg, you hatch that chick, and it takes 17 weeks for that chick to grow to 2.7 pounds, and then it's ready to start laying an egg. And then from 17 weeks to, say, 22, 23, 24 weeks, it'll slowly come into production, in full production. And when that, when that bird is in that 22 to 35-week-old period, is probably producing an egg about every 22 hours. As a chicken gets older in age, it'll start stretching that out to 24 hours to 26 hours to, you know, by the time the, the chicken has been around for two years and it's an old, old chicken, you know, walking around with a cane or, <laughs> uh, you know, it's probably only producing an egg every 36 hours or, or 40 mm. hours, something like that. Is that about the, this is, I don't know how to say it, but like the lifespan of a, Laying, hen. yeah, rough, um, roughly two about, years. Yeah, about two years. Okay, and then do we turn them into chicken nuggets at that point, or? Uh, they're used for multiple things. I mean, they, yeah, they can be butchered, and and there's parts shipped all over the world. Like like the legs could be shipped to Africa. The wings, I mean, yeah, or it's uh, ground up and put into pet food. Tell me just a little bit about the safety, the welfare of the animals, how the egg producers. I know it's a big thing. We have Dakota layers actually in, well, I think their address would be Elkton, South Dakota, but they're just down the road from me. Yep. I live in Southwest Minnesota and it's locked down, right? You can't mm -hmm. come in and out. There's no guests. You wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to say, Hey, let me come tour the egg facility because safety and the welfare of the animals is such a big deal. The, the safety and the welfare is bird flu, the risk of, of bird flu entering the premises. I think they've been hit twice now with bird flu. We ourselves have been hit. Uh, uh, we were hit in, in 2015 and we were mm. just recently hit this past fall again as well in one of our operations. So we want as least amount of people going through our sites as possible for the risk because According to the government, the way bird flu enters a premise is it's tracked in through people population. You know, it's like okay. you're on the ground, uh, you get it on your on your feet, and and you track it in. That's that's the way it happens. So as long as we can limit our traffic in and out of those chicken houses, we feel safer mm -hmm. from that standpoint. And you know, we take the utmost care in in caring for our animals because people have this perception that. You know, farmers don't take care of their animals. Our livelihood comes from those animals. So we give them the best care possible so that they're the most productive 
you know, whether it be hogs or cattle or chickens or whatever, mm -hmm. we, we take care of them and to the best of our knowledge. And because the better we can take care of them, the better they're going to produce. Mm -hmm. And we want to be as efficient as possible. Saying that farmers don't have a heart, picture a blizzard. You know, when I was growing up running chicken houses, uh, if there was a blizzard outside, I didn't stay in the house. I was out in the chicken coop making sure that everything was working properly in the blizzard. And I, I didn't uh, stay in the house, that type of thing. Or, or if there's a tornado or a storm, it's like, I'm, I'm going to the chicken house and making sure everything's all right versus staying in the house and being safe. Right. And that's, that's what farmers do. Mm -hmm. Let's talk just about some egg basics. Why or how, how do you measure when we see large eggs or medium size eggs or extra large? How are those determined? Is it by weight? No, well, it's, it's by weight. It all goes by weight. And oh, okay. I don't know where the, where the breakdown is of, of the weight, you know, medium, large, extra large, but mm -hmm. I can tell you that when the chicken first starts laying egg, they come out as smalls. And as the chicken oh. gets older, they, they gets to mediums and the older it gets, it gets to large. And as the chicken ages, the chick, the eggs get larger. Now the most eggs in the store that get sold are large and extra large. You know, you can, mm -hmm. you can find jumbos, you can find smalls and you can find mediums in the store, but, the biggest sellers are large and extra large. What about white and brown? Where where do these colors come from? That part I have, and I again I am very new, so certainly hop in if you know different. And Bruce would know. Um, I've heard that it is the color of the chicken's ears. Is that right. true? That's true. That's it's what the of their earlobes. Yeah, oh, it's their earlobe. Yes, it's yes. their earlobe. And. Nutritionally, there's no difference between a brown or a white egg or a blue egg or a green egg or a chicken that lays white eggs uh, with the genetics lays more is more productive than a brown, a brown egg bird. Are they, uh, I'm not a vegetarian, so I was wondering if, uh, do vegetarians eat eggs? They do. Um, they do yeah. Okay. Um, That's good protein probably. Yes, yeah, so they're not suitable for a vegan since the vegans are, you know, no animal products whatsoever. They are suitable for vegetarians and oftentimes that's their number one source of protein. So they rely heavily on the egg and moving into egg nutrition. So sometimes people when they're trying to be healthier and you know, get more eggs in their diet, maybe they'll just eat the whites, but actually the nutrients are found in the yolk. So yay, that's my favorite part. <laughs> yes, yes. And they're the best source of choline that is out there. The one of the only sources of choline for brain health. It's a it's a winner if especially if you're following a vegetarian diet to include eggs. So on that track of talking about the nutritional value, what what are some of the good nutrients and, and vitamins and everything that we get from eggs. Because sometimes you hear, oh, they're high in cholesterol. You shouldn't be eating eggs. But to me, I think they're one of the best foods. Right. So they have come out and said it's not actually the dietary cholesterol that you know accumulates in your body that you should be worried about. It is not that type of, um, that's just a misconception. So we are working hard to try to you know share the message and let you know dietitians and primary care physicians know that um, eggs are still part of a heart healthy diet and we're also working with the American Heart Association both on mm -hmm. the state level but also the American Egg Board has a partner a national partnership with the American Heart Association um, eggs are a good source of B vitamins as well they have six grams of protein and they have about about 70 calories and they have some of the omega-3s and omega-6s, so a really good bang for your buck with nutrients. They also have uh, lutein in there, which is good for vision. I see on your website, you call them a powerhouse food. Yes, yes. And I love using that terminology to help share egg nutrition with elementary schoolers because that's such a, such a powerful word, you know, powerhouse mm -hmm. food speaks to the fact that you can eat one egg and get a lot of nutrients in. One of the things that 
the University of Iowa does with their open heart patients is the first solid food that they have after an open heart surgery is an egg because it's so easy digestible and it contains so many nutrients and nutritional value. How about any, are there any other health benefits? There's certain foods that help reduce glucose or help manage weight. Is there any of that kind of health benefit from eggs? Yes. On, on the weight side, um, it's, it's the most satisfying to you. So it actually helps reduce weight because it makes you feel fuller longer because you have that sat- satisfaction of, of a well-rounded nutritional impact on your, on your system. Especially if you're making an omelet with bacon and cheese in it, right? <laughs> right. And mm-hmm. onions and peppers and. Or the deviled eggs, which we'll get to here pretty soon. Food safety. Why? Why do some countries not refrigerate their eggs? And why do we in the U.S. refrigerate our eggs? Mm-hmm. So supposedly there's three countries in the world that refrigerate their eggs. United States being one of them. So the chicken, when it lays an egg, puts a natural sheen around the egg and coats the egg that seals the eggs from anything getting in or out. So when in the United States, when we wash the egg, we take that sheen off. So now that egg is unprotected. So now you have to refrigerate. And now, now the, now the eggshell is, can breathe, you know, in and out type of thing. So it has to be refrigerated after you wash it. So So if you have your own chickens and you're bringing in a bunch of eggs, if you're not washing them, they're okay to sit out. Yep. Correct. They are. So I can speak as a backyard farmer and this is why they want to wash them because chickens, it all comes out of the same place. So usually in my experience, we'd get poopy eggs because you can't wash it off necessarily, or you wash off that little, that lining that protects it and makes it safe to keep on the counter. I'm, I'm for all types of eggs and, and your, your safest egg to eat in the store is, is going to be a caged egg. Like when you buy cage free eggs, you know, those chickens are running around and they're eating everything and anything, right? They're eating bugs. They're eating, they could be eating their own poop, you know, cause they're mm-hmm. scratching the dirt. They could be eating anything, you know, you got to consider that's all going into the egg, right? On, on cage free. Now, as far as cage cages eggs you know conventional eggs we call them those chickens are receiving an, a balanced nutritional diet so they're eating what a chicken should be eating so those eggs are generally have a less bacterial count in those eggs than than cage free eggs mhm we're coming up on easter so i was thinking about my kids are all grown now so we're not decorating easter eggs but when you hard boil eggs and then you decorate them for Easter and then have them sitting around or you're hiding them. I mean, how long can those eggs be sitting out before they're really not safe for the kids to eat? You should just throw them away and then that way you buy more eggs. (laughs) No, I would not eat them is the answer. (laughs) Now I I do set eggs out, regular eggs, not hard boiled eggs, but when I make cheesecake, especially you have to start with a room temperature egg. So my eggs will sit out for a couple hours. So they're room temp, but you know, if if you're leaving your eggs set out and they're in your shell, you know, to get them to room temperature, you can leave them set out and then cook them because when you cook them, you're you're basically pasteurizing it. So sure, we geek pretty hard on food safety at my house. My husband's a chef, and mm. mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so we um, he, he's very conscious and has taught me about no longer than two hours. Doesn't matter what it is, it. You know, put it. You cannot put it back in the fridge after that time. It cannot be consumed. And you know, if something ha- is frozen and thawed, you can't throw it back in the freezer. So, yeah, yeah we kind of talk a lot about that at my house and with our young son as well. So, sure. All right. The my burning question about the best buy or the sell by date on an egg carton. Mm. How long can my husband still make me breakfast? <laughs> Using eggs if they've expired. So I feel hesitant as an organization to say anything beyond <laughs> okay. that. Um, yeah. yeah. I, I'm hesitant too, but. <laughs> I'm I'm, because I don't I, want to put that out as advice. Yeah. Okay. Well, then then we'll be in the, 
the camp where it's like, well, Best Buy was last weekend. I don't think I want eggs from there this weekend. But let's talk a little bit about recipes because I hear, I think, Bruce, do you have the title of director of deviled eggs? <laughs> yeah, I think people give me that title. But I kind of do, uh, you know, if I have a hobby, it's it's dabbling in deviled eggs, yes. So how did that happen? Why deviled eggs? Well, somebody's got to make them because they're, they're kind of cool. You know, I've anything that's in your fridge can be a mastermind into a deviled egg. Any kind of leftovers you could create a deviled egg out of, I feel. Yeah. So I will share the, you sent me some recipes, so I'll share them on my website, randomsweets.com. And then also a lot of these you can find on your website too, but you sent over shrimp deviled eggs, smoked deviled eggs, um, which I've wanted to do smoke the eggs. And I was wondering, but what you do is you hard boil them, then you peel them and then you're smoking them. Are you doing a cold smoke? I didn't check that. Uh, well, I got a trigger. So, uh, The lowest I can get it is 165. So okay. I uh, put my eggs on there 30 minutes at 165, super smoke. You know, if, okay. if, yeah. And then I roll them half a turn and then I smoke them another 30 minutes. So basically they're on the smoker for an hour. An hour. And that's a, that's one that's already hard boiled, but you've taken the shell off. Yep. Okay. And you also sent over a sweet and or sassy deviled egg avocado mm-hmm. deviled eggs and then here's this one that i love the cheesy peasy deviled eggs how in the world did you think about putting the petite peas in a deviled egg i love it well you, like macaroni salad has hard-boiled eggs and peas and yep a exactly. lot of these ingredients so why not put it in a uh why not put it in an egg right <laughs> right <Duh. laughs> i like peas and i thought well i'm gonna i'm gonna create this uh egg with the peas in it so Mm -hmm. i also like that in some of the recipes or maybe i for sure in one but you're you're just putting all the ingredients in like a little ziploc bag and sort of smooshing them around until they're all mixed and then Mm -hmm. yeah no your eggs that that's the way i do all my stuff is uh you know when i take the egg yolk out i put it in a uh, ziploc bag if i do six eggs i usually use a quart size uh, ziploc bag if i do 12 eggs or more, I'll do, I'll use a gallon size Ziploc bag, but I put all my ingredients in there and then just, you know, make sure you got it. You want to make sure you got it Ziploc good. <laughs> Are you speaking oh. from personal experience? Yeah, once in a while it uh, opens up on you. <laughs> yeah. I've never got a big mess, but but anyway, and then you just squish it around with your hands and, and then uh, you get it all down to the bottom and cut the corner off and pipe it into your egg. Saves, saves a lot of time and a lot of dishes. You even have done some TV segments, haven't you? Showing people how to do your deviled eggs, sharing your recipes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what, what was that show? Hello, yes. Iowa. Yeah. I think I was on Hello, Iowa here. Uh, when was that again, Melissa? Oh, it was on National Deviled Egg Day last year. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, November. National Deviled Egg Day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, November oh, 2. Okay. Don't forget it. <laughs> okay. You know, someday... Someday I'm hoping that that gets to be a national holiday where everybody can have the day off and go in and just stay home and make deviled eggs. Have you ever done a, uh, like a cooking competition or anything like that? The Iowa Egg Council should do that. Don't you guys have like an omelet recipe contest going on right now? Or you should do a deviled egg cook-off thing. Yeah. So we did it. We are currently doing an omelet competition for the restaurants in Iowa. Um, We're still in the nomination period. So if anyone's interested, they can head to our website and learn how to nominate their favorite omelet from their favorite restaurant. In Iowa. Cool. Yes, in Iowa. So we also did have the first, um, what we're hoping will be annual deviled egg competition last year. Bruce was a judge and (laughs) other board members as well. And we had asked local, you know, politicians, um, local fire, local radio personalities, dignitaries, Des Moines public schools, just a nice variety of folks from the metro. We really asked the metro because they're, you know, local to us. Oh, sure. How convenient would it be from someone 
on the corners of the state to have to drive their deviled eggs over to us. So um, well, if they think they got a real winner, it's worth it. <laughs> that's true. That's true. So, um, yeah, we had uh, eggs there from uh, uh, Governor Reynolds, and uh, I think we had Joni Ernst in there. Einstra as well. We had Einstra, yeah. and we had um, who we had a we had Danger. 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 Yep, Danger was second place. He's a, a DJ radio personality here with Nash FM locally. And we had Michelle Book from uh, the Food Bank of Iowa, and she was actually the winner. Oh. So what? Which ones won? What were they? Well, oh. you know, the because Bruce, you you didn't get to enter yours, so <laughs> yeah, I I took some of mine along to to let all the judges know what they should look like. <laughs> and Michelle Book was probably the closest one on presentation. She had a really good presentation going on. Let's just say, you know, they didn't quite meet up to my my standards. I I there's a lot of education that needs to go out there. Yeah, I <laughs> feel. <laughs> Melissa, I I think that's a mission set for you, right? I like it. It does sound like it. Okay, so I'm going to add that to what we offer here at the I like <laughs> how to make the perfect deviled egg presentation. Yes, yes. If it looks good, it tastes good, right? That's true. Well, we we eat with our eyes. So, yeah. So I will add, you know, my claim to fame would be, and, and probably my bucket list would be, I don't know if it'll ever happen. It probably never will, but so we have an operation in Mozambique, Africa. So uh, I go down there, you know, one, two times a year or whenever needed. So uh, at the time, this was, I think this was in 2019, my daughter was living in, um, Paris, France at the time for not for the summer. So I was able to make deviled eggs on three continents in three days. So I was on the continent of Africa, Europe, and uh, North America. So, so I, I left Africa the day I left, I made deviled eggs, landed in Paris and made eggs the next day because you fly during the night. And then when I got home, the first thing I did was make deviled eggs and, <laughs> My wife Deb says, "What are you? Why are you making deviled eggs when you get home?" I says, "Well, because the last two days I've been on two continents and made deviled eggs, so I I want to make eggs on a third continent. So you know, my my thing now would be is if I could do all seven continents in seven days. Oh my goodness! Ooh, well, do it. Well, I got to have somebody sponsor me though. How about the Iowa Egg Council? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have an idea. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny." <laughs> Let's let's run is that there, up the flagpole, Melissa. Let's run we, up the budget, see if that works. Is there a I national egg council or something? Mm -hmm. Oh, there's American Egg Board. Yeah, there you go. The egg yeah. board. I bet they would love that. So what is it that you think makes the perfect devil the egg or the presentation? Is there something? Well, I go after taste. I don't really go after presentation. Oh. Okay. Do you have tips for making other kinds of eggs so scrambled eggs do you add a little milk to your scrambled eggs i do uh you know some people add water uh e mm -hmm. either works it's basically a tablespoon of milk with per egg that's how my husband does it i just throw the liquid egg we use liquid egg a lot at our house okay. and especially since my 10 year old son um He's a pretty good cook, but it just is everybody's preference if he uses liquid egg ver versus trying to crack his own eggs. Yeah, sometimes there's definitely a little bit of shell in there. So we use liquid egg and I just dump dump it directly in the pan. No milk, no water, no nothing. So I guess you don't get a fluffy egg at my house. Well, if you use a liquid egg, all the stuff is in there. So you don't need to add that milk or water. That's true. I noticed oh, yeah. it's garlic and everything on my current container. I'm like, yes, no wonder this is so delicious. <laughs> I'm going to move into just the last part here where I wanted to ask a few kitchen tips, but you're peeling a lot of eggs if you're doing deviled eggs. How have you mastered hard boiling and then peeling, Bruce? So, you know, believe it or not, I've made... Uh... Uh, in Sioux Center here, whenever we have a political event, I've I've served deviled eggs to the governor and a couple of times and, and stuff. So I've had to do like, you know, three to four hundred eggs at a time. But Oof, duh. 
I've I've kind of found out that my my thing is I let my eggs sit out. <laughs> now don't do this at home, but I let <laughs> <laughs> bleep bleep bleep. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I leave my eggs set out. You know, a little more than two hours. I get them to room temperature, yeah. and uh, and then I I in my pan I put a bunch of salt in it, and then. I put my eggs in the pan, put salt in it, and then uh, put hot water in there and then put it on the stove. And as soon as it gets to a boil, uh, nine minutes, and then I take it off and put it in an ice bath for four to five minutes, and then they peel pretty nice. Now, the other trick is you want to have older eggs. You want to have eggs that are two weeks old or so. They peel better than a fresh egg. And how do you know if they're Well, if you buy old? If you buy them in the store and keep them in your fridge for two weeks, they're two weeks old. <laughs> That's true. Okay. <clears throat> Why the salt's in the pot? I, I don't know. That's just what I get off the internet. Some people say baking soda <laughs> does the same trick. Yes, I've heard that. Yeah. Because it helps with the peeling of the shells or what? Yeah, I don't know what it does. Oh, okay. It's okay. It seems to work, so that's my that's my go-to I definitely have learned, I used to, I would do the eggs and then put them in the ice bath and then put them in the refrigerator. And I mean, it's so much easier to peel those eggs when they're still warm. Not, don't wait till they're cold. Yeah, I I put them in the ice bath and, and you know, some people say 10 minutes, but I, I generally start peeling them at about, you know, that four or five minute range when they're still mm -hmm. warm a little bit. And I seem to yeah. have more luck than when they're ice cold. Right. Because isn't the intent of the ice bath just to kind of stop the cooking process so that they don't kind of get that green yeah. layer circle in there? Yeah. So if you boil them too long, they you get that green looking around the around the outside of the yolk. So mm -hmm. that's why I kind of go nine minutes and then they're nice and yellow on me. Um, the same with separating eggs. If you're trying to separate the yolk from the white, it's easier to do when they're cold. So if you're baking something and you need to separate, it works better when it's when they're cold. I'm telling you that. Oh, all right. <laughs> I'm not asking you. Sorry. I would I think it. Know. I think yeah. it would be easier if it was room temperature to separate. Yeah, it's actually when they're cold because the the yolk isn't warm because it it more easily will break up on you if mm -hmm. it's warm. Where if you do it when it's cold, you can quick separate it and then that that yolk is kind of it holds together better so all right you guys have you ever tried to make eggs in an air fryer i don't have an air fryer so i didn't know if there's a oh. way to do eggs in an air fryer stick a pin in that though because i have both eggs and an air fryer hmm. well you you try it and see if there's a way to do something i don't yeah. know That's these younger fun. kids you know use air fryers for everything and my kids both have air fryers so i was wondering if there's a way to do anything which also reminds me, we have one of those, I call it the Egginator, but Jason's mom gave us this thing, right? That you put the eggs in, there's a little bit of water on the bottom and you can hard boil them or, and then I, I thought, I wonder if you can put, do your wok with your bamboo steamer. Could you, oh, wow. would that work to make, because they come out of that so nice when they're steamed. So um, this lady in Omaha that has, owns the, a deviled egg store it's called Dev deviled egg co you're kidding me okay she actually uh, steams her eggs she has a steamer that she can put 180 eggs in and steam them all at once and then peel them wow all right well i'm gonna try it then because they just come out of that thing that little egginator just so gloriously yellow and perfect and really i'm gonna have to check out this deviled egg company that's in Omaha, you said, Bruce? Yes. Okay. 180th and Q. Highly recommended. <laughs> All right. Well, are there any other tips or mistruths that you want to clarify about eggs or egg producing? Any insight you want to share before we wrap it up here? So I do have a couple of things. I wanted to mention, we talked a little bit about egg dietary things and the health benefits. So I know I, I follow a gal called Glucose Goddess, and she works to find meals that 
help control diabetic glucose. So, you know, the different foods that will spike your, like she does a lot of the scientific work monitoring what spikes your food or what food spikes your blood sugars, what levels off and just stays there. So mm -hmm. she frequently uses eggs as one of her things that help maintain blood sugar rather than spike. And she does recipes. She does research, everything like that. And you can, again, her name is glucose goddess. Okay. So that's um, where I don't know of anyone doing that work right now, you know, within our agencies we work with, but certainly mm -hmm. there's bloggers and it's easy to do that type of research. Just checking your blood sugar or buying a continuous glucose monitor, monitor would do that. I, I like that because obviously spiking your blood sugar over and over is not healthy. Right. Yeah. So that's the first thing. And then something we like to talk about a lot at the Iowa Egg Council is how the egg farmers really aren't the misconception of big egg. And everybody wants to talk about that. And a lot of these folks are small. That's your neighbor. It's, it's Bruce Doima raising, you know what I mean? It's the mm -hmm. small families that are doing this and, you know, they come together and maybe we'll work under a larger umbrella, but really these organizations are families doing this, doing the work. So we try to share farmer stories and, you know, it's, it's your neighbor that's doing this farming. Mm -hmm. it, it looks a little bit different when, especially when it's the egg industry, it's smaller egg farmers that come together to do this. Bruce, what do you want to leave us with? Uh, eat more eggs. <laughs> and, you know, deviled eggs are the best way to eat them. <laughs> Although I, I do, I do like eggs Benedict as well. When whenever we go oh. to a restaurant in the morning, eggs Benedict is is my go to thing. I haven't mastered it making it at home. I, okay. I just tinker with uh, deviled eggs. My latest one that I've done is a wasabi deviled egg. Oh, so that's going to be pretty spicy. Yep. What other? Do you have any other like unusual or unusual creations? So I, I do a bruschetta one. Oh. Devil Day. That one's uh that one's pretty good. That's probably my one that I would keep in the back closet for a devil day contest if I ever entered one. Mm. I would pull out the bruschetta one. Mm -hmm. So you maybe don't want to tell us what's in it? <laughs> um tomatoes. No, I got I got I gotta keep that one a secret, but it's really, okay. really good. Yeah. <laughs> okay. My favorite deviled egg that I've had so far of, well, of any deviled egg is Bruce's, um, I don't know what you call it, nacho maybe? Oh, egg? the the Mexican one. Yeah. the yes. I call it taco deviled egg. The taco one is my favorite. And I know our recipe, his recipe is on our website, um, iowaegg.org. And okay. it includes a Dorito chip on it. And it's a nice little, doo -doo, the, Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I he brought it in, and I probably ate half, half the tray myself. Ooh. <laughs> I'll it. find that on your website, and I'll link to it in the blog oh, post and in the show notes. So, but speaking of your website, so it is your website, and then where social media can people find you and follow you too? So uh, we have Facebook, and that would be the Iowa Egg Council. Um, we're on Instagram and that's, I think it's Iowa underscore egg is our handle. We do have X formerly known as Twitter as well. And that's Iowa egg. And we're working on a TikTok. Ooh, I don't know. So if anyone wants to give us a couple of tags, help us generate some followers and content because I'm working on finding what's what's right for that platform but mm -hmm. um and we do have a link as well that i post more of the business side of things although of course i post you know some of our nil deals post about the march madness upcoming things like that but um, how about pinterest do you have pinterest where you're sharing your links to your recipes pinterest, and i didn't realize that pinterest was really still a big thing out there for us. So I never stopped using it. And I, but I felt like there was a decline in the amount of people sharing things. And we just went to an American egg board meeting and they said, no, there's not a decline on their end. So I will be ramping that back up. We do have um, an Iowa egg council Pinterest. So Pinterest. Do okay. well, revive That's that a little bit more. 
that's where you get all these wild uh, deviled egg recipes is, you know, true. that's true. The a lot of ladies one. use Pinterest for recipes. That's true. Yeah, I It's the big search engine now for it. And that's, I know for my website, that's where most of my traffic comes from is Pinterest. Oh, really? Okay. Yep. Well, yeah. And for your TikTok, I think you'd have Bruce on there doing his deviled eggs. We get all so. kinds of traffic. <laughs> I think so. So we have a couple of important days coming up. We have National Egg Month and National Egg Day coming up. Um, when are those? No, let me make sure. National Egg Day is Monday, June 3rd. And that is the day we are going to announce the omelet winner as well. So, and then it's National Egg Month is all of May. So, okay, we will be rolling out. We'll roll out the recipes, and that will be the voting period as well for our um, omelet competition. World Egg Day is October 10 of this year, and then our company uh, in Sioux Center here, we actually uh, serve omelets that morning to the whole community, whoever shows up. So we usually end up making. A thousand to twelve hundred omelets that morning. Oh my god! Wow. And I'm then, only a couple hours from Sioux Center, so <laughs> put it on your calendar. Show up; it's free. Uh, and then, of course, National Double Day Day on November two. Mm -hmm. That's okay. that's one holiday that they don't move. It's always on November two. It's never no matter what day of the week it is. Yeah, yeah. it's never on a Monday. You know, like every true holiday, it is associated with. <laughs> <laughs> right, Bruce? Yeah. Wait a minute. You, you guys. <laughs> like I think it's October 11th. October 11th is a Friday, because it would be on a Friday, I think. World Egg Day. Okay. Oh, World Egg Day. Okay. Yeah. Fun. I need to add that. Oh, yeah. Friday. Power October. to the egg. We love the eggs. <laughs> yeah. So if anyone is interested in seeing what we do, our some of our most visible work would be at the Iowa State Fair. Um, we have a large silo in the ag building, the agriculture building. Mm -hmm. so the commodity groups are in there and they have ice cream and they have um, some of like the FFA and 4-H displays are up there. But the, the big piece in the middle is the big metal silo and that is the Iowa Egg Council and we hand out how many how many eggs did we do last year? I can't remember off the top 173, of my head. 173,000. I was looking because we have a board in here with that number. Um, yeah, so somewhere thereabouts, 100, between 160, 170 something every year it seems. Um, we hand out hard boiled eggs on a stick that you dip in some um, cookies seasoning and it's obviously a winner with handing out that many and we have some <laughs> egg tattoos and photo ops and things like that. So our state fair is certainly the most visible thing we do in Iowa. All right, Melissa and Bruce, thank you for giving your time and sharing some of your secrets today. <laughs> I'll, <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll post recipes and things on the website and then link back to yours. I'll put them in the show notes. So when people are looking for those and, Hopefully they'll see you at the fair or, um, you know, even if they are too far away to do that, they can celebrate with these national egg days and things like that. So yeah. I really appreciate it. It was fun to meet you both. Yes, you as well. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, Stacy. I cannot wait to smoke my deviled eggs and add tiny peas. <laughs> A few of Bruce's deviled egg recipes are on randomsweets.com, and there are also some other great recipes on iowaegg.org. Bruce, Melissa, and I had a lengthy conversation about the float test, where you test the freshness of your eggs by placing them in a bowl of water. They say that if the eggs sink to the bottom, they are fresh and good to use, but if an egg floats to the top, it's probably old and stale and you shouldn't use it. I also did a little research to answer my own question about how long eggs are good past the best buy date on an egg carton. And according to the U.S. Department of Agriculture, there's a three-digit code on the carton that represents the pack date, starting with January 1 as 001 and ending with December 31st as 365. Then it goes on to say to always purchase eggs before the sell-by or expiration date on the carton. Okay, done. <laughs> 
and that once the eggs are home with us, they may be refrigerated three to five weeks from the date they are placed in the refrigerator, and that that sell-by date will usually expire during that length of time, but the eggs are perfectly safe to use. <laughs> so I don't know, maybe do the float test or just do like Bruce suggested and eat more eggs and then you never have to worry about them expiring. I hope you enjoyed this extravaganza with the Iowa Egg Council. Thank you so much for listening. I'm your host, Stacy Mergenthal. Sweet wishes. 